And good morning, everyone. It is uh, Tuesday, kind of a rainy Tuesday at that. We've had some uh, downpours around the area for the overnight and some gusty winds. Be part of the focal point for today. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to Storm Talk, the weather blog update on this uh, Tuesday, the 20, it's the 26th. Uh, is that right? I'm losing track of all the days here lately. I think it's a, I think it's a 26th. I know when April the 8th is. I know when May the 4th is. I usually know when my birthday is, so everything's good. We're in good shape there. Hope you guys are well. We're going to talk about some of the rain totals. So if you have any rain uh, gauge reports that you picked up from the rain from last night, by all means, uh, you can type them in the chat. You can do so on YouTube, on X, as well as on uh, Facebook, and I'll be able to see those pop in. Give us an idea of some of the rain totals that you had in your backyard. Right now, we're still dealing with the clouds and still dealing with the wind. Uh, currently outside, uh, we've got some gusty winds. You saw that briefly into a new Albany. Current gust is 23 miles per hour. We got 40 right now. The current gust into uh, Lexington, uh, nearing that as you head down into uh, Marion County and as you head off to the west, still some gusts back into Evansville and into Illinois. That is something we'll be watching for later. Just FYI, uh, still remaining gusty out there. And as we head through the next couple of hours, I don't see a lot changing. Once we start to get a little more of a partly sunny sky that will try to come back into play. That's when we could see those numbers get up there again, over 40 miles per hour. I believe in Louisville, I believe this 41 was the gust in Louisville uh, that we have for the overnight. Uh, some spots, obviously, a lot higher, but that's the last number I recall seeing. Okay, so the first round of rain moved through. Uh, we're on the backside of it. The problem is the rain band, now that it is, yes, east of us, it's not really wanting to go anywhere at the moment. The front is really slowing down. Uh, in the area. So because of that, we end up with a uh, very much a stalled setup there in eastern Kentucky. Now, what you're about to see, though, is that rain down in Tennessee is going to track right along the path of where that front has stalled to the east. And that is going to allow for a surge of uh, light to, I would say, moderate rainfall, a steady rainfall will emerge out of this between now and about 11 or so this morning. So it's going to be fairly quick here. It'll happen. And it's got a limit on how far west it will reach. So if you're in Grayson County, you should be too far west. But if you are in uh, LaRue County, uh, Marion County, Washington County, even in two parts of Louisville, we may be right on the edge of that surge as it moves northbound. Again, roughly in this zone. <laughs> just scribble all over. You get that right over there. Over there. See it right there. That's where the rain's going to go, somewhere over in that area. There you go. Um, anyway, get that idea. Once that then moves... Don't you love the story? Once that then moves, then we have a chance to get a couple of thunderstorms to pop uh, in the afternoon hours. So everything's got its own little phase, if you will, on how this will play out. So let's start with the current temperature outside, 60 degrees. Got uh, 58 into Fort Knox, 55, double nickel down into Campbellsville. So you can tell we really haven't seen a whole lot of movement on thermometer, really, since much of the uh, overnight hours. Uh, here's a wider view showing that flow, that uh, moisture being surged up the eastern seaboard. And um, these are our fading thunderstorms at one point during the overnight hours in the deep south. And again, right here is that little surge of rain that is going to make it right on the western side and clip right into wave country. And that's why I think if you're going to be out and about between now and lunch hour uh, today, just be aware there could be some uh, brief showers anyway that uh, may zip on by. Nothing too heavy. But also notice back to the west, this little curl right there. That is the actual spin of the low pressure that is now into the Midwest. It is that little curl that is dripping down across areas of eastern uh, Missouri, west central Illinois. That is what we're watching for later on today. Because as it moves into Indiana, the question will be, will it, our atmosphere, will it be ready for it to arrive? Will it be still cloudy and overcast from this morning little surge of rain that's moving up? into Kentucky, will that still be a factor? Or will that have already passed by and we've already busted back out in partly sunny skies, then the curl begins to arrive. That would mean a whole different way the afternoon will begin to play out. So there's the curl we're watching. Uh, winds, by the way, are pretty strong on either side of this. So I fully expect, even though we've got gusty winds now, not nothing too terrible, but those gusts around 40 or so will really ramp up once the, uh, the curl does move across the region. So about mid-afternoon today, we could have gusts again around 40 to 45 miles per hour. Okay, so be aware of that as it moves on by. The problem I've got here on the anything on the severe side is as this curl moves on by, will there be enough fuel uh, for this to feed on to power the thunderstorms? It's not a thunderstorm complex right now. It's just a batch of showers. That's it. 
But as it moves into Indiana and central Kentucky, especially, will the sun be out long enough to make a difference and allow this to be a little bit on the uh, stronger side, maybe even briefly severe? It's a good question. And this is one that we always love to call now casting because we've got to figure out how much of the spread of this rain here out of Tennessee, how far west will that be? Because if it's too far west and we got showers in here all the way uh, through uh, 11 to 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we're good. I'm not worried about it. Storm throw will be out of here. So it's very much a conditional threat. It's a race between the curl and the rain surge. Here's the wind fields. See the strongest of the wind fields, mainly over us, but also notice there's some purple there showing up with the curl. And again, that's why the wind will begin to ramp up. So the Storm Prediction Center, what they're doing is they're going to handle the idea there will be some fuel to get some thunderstorms that will try to form as we head into the um, mid to late afternoon window. They're liking the idea of the wind fields because the low pressure itself is right here and it's moving this way. It makes sense that they're going to be a much more prime area, Kokomo, Indiana, Fort Wayne, all the way up to uh, Detroit. That'll be the spot to watch for isolated tornadoes and hail. And then they really taper the risk down to really Louisville uh, to a marginal risk because it's unclear whether or not anything can even form this far south with such a rainier setup. Uh, moving in and across the central portions of the uh, the Commonwealth right now. So that all makes sense. So right now, I'm not too worried about severe weather. And if we were going to see anything like that, it's likely going to be out of our area and more of an issue for Indianapolis all the way into Ohio. There you go. Easy peasy, right? That's the latest in the storm chance. I'm thinking about taking it down to maybe a 20, 30 percent, something like that for the afternoon. Uh, just right now until I see how that surge of rain comes in out of Tennessee, uh, I'm not seeing a lot that can happen that would be in the favor of this being our problem. So that's good. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's see. What do I got for you guys? What do I got for you guys? Oh, rain totals. Let me back up. I'm going to show you that. Uh, the rain totals forecast, this is from uh, so far from the event, about a tenth to a quarter of an inch. That looks fair. Got a few half inch amounts south of the parkways, but I would say a tenth to a quarter of an inch was pretty, pretty common. I didn't see any rain numbers i think you guys more worried that i didn't know the date uh gene i see your comment ask about easter i'm about ready to get to it <laughs> ashley if i could see it you can point it out again all right there you go fair enough fair enough okay let's get into the easter setup gene's ready for it i'm ready for it so here's how we're going to get to that uh let me start with the um uh, future cast showing again the rain moving through the mid day period especially between i-65 and i-64 here come the little baby storms that form along the actual curl you can see how they begin to pop uh into southern indiana all the way into ohio again i'm not completely sold on this happening yet we got to go partly sunny for that to happen it's possible but just let you know that's what we'll be watching for today uh roughly around three four five maybe six o'clock it's out of here quick though whatever does form it's gone and then we get ready for a cold night, at least colder night tonight. We're really not going to get into the frost freeze type of talk until Wednesday night and Thursday morning. Then we get into the holiday weekend. Still looks like a mess here. And as far as the um, a very sluggish type of pattern where we don't have just one system rolling in and it's clear cut, you, you warm up, you get thunderstorms and you cool down. This one's... <laughs> Um, it's got the warm up. It's like he opens up the first one moves through, opens up the floodgates here for warm weather by laying a warm front across the Ohio Valley into the mid Atlantic. It puts the warm front down and then it just like leaves town. And therefore, every single system that comes in after that has a chance to attach itself to the front, even for a brief moment, and use it to its advantage to allow for showers and thunderstorms to form along it. And then even that low pressure may detach and move on, but the front is still there. It takes a system that's going to latch onto the warm front and drag it with it to clear the air out. How fast will all that happen? That's a good question. Uh, because the time period of storm potential, at least entering the storm potential zone, looks to be sometime on Saturday, and we may not be out of it until sometime Tuesday or even Wednesday. Um, the first chance, again, with the warm front moving in will be Saturday afternoon, again, Easter Sunday. But you got to keep in mind, with warm fronts, your best ability to get thunderstorms is going to be near and north of the front. That's where your most action will be. And they can sometimes be strong, but it's going to be very close to wherever that is. I don't think the models have got that right. They're varying. It may very well be Bowling Green or Pulaski County in Somerset where the front is settled. Or it could very well be up around Keynes Island in Cincinnati and too far north and to leave us alone. And that would be nice because that would mean a uh, mid-70s and sunny Easter. 
versus the southern idea would reign in 50s for Easter. So this warm front, absolutely crucial in the holiday weekend forecast, not only on temperature, but also on thunderstorm action that would be tracking from a west to east fashion along it, some of which could be briefly strong, um, as you're about to see. Uh, after that, uh, again, another wave Monday to Tuesday. And then at some point on Tuesday, it looks like this is going to be the low that wants to finally grab a hold of the warm front and then take it with it and head down into the deep south, giving us a break for about Tuesday and Wednesday of uh, next week. Uh, not all the modeling agrees on that fast of a, a grabbing of the front and moving it down or not. Some linger it longer, but it could be a multi-day event of thunderstorms and some of which could be uh, multiple days of uh, strong thunderstorms. Here's the latest from CSU, Colorado State, the, um, the learning module type of stuff for severe weather. And I know it may be hard to read here, so let me go full screen. This is looking at um, each day in the future here. We start, this is going to be Sunday, your severe risk. It's uh, low end, yellow is a little bit higher end. Best way to look at this is uh, brown is like a marginal risk and yellow is a slight risk, it's fair. So it's got at least some storm risk on Sunday, Monday, still there. And then Tuesday, we're still there. So that's a multi-day potential on severe weather potential that we could have in the Ohio River Valley back into the uh, Southern Plains area, Mississippi Valley. But again, we've got to figure out first off where the front will be, and then we'll figure out all this mess here. But at least the AI is starting to catch on that this could be um, a problem for part of the holiday weekend. Don't need to cancel your plans. Don't change them yet. Don't worry about Easter eggs and we're gonna hide them. Uh, we're not to that level yet. This is a big heads up and everything becomes clear, as you guys always know, as we get closer. Are we good? Uh, let's see. You're really good. Like a large Twix, even bigger than <laughs> They're really good. Twix chocolate candy. What am I talking about chocolate for? Did I say something about candy? I missed something about candy. Uh, Twix coffee bars. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Maybe I missed something. Was I talking about candy? I probably was talking about candy, to be honest with you. The way my week's been going, I brains all the place. Okay, everyone seems good. All right. Type two minus four. Two minus four if you're good. Two minus four if you're good. I know you may be wondering about the outlook for um, the eclipse. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, there's still two different systems that are showing up. And basically on either side of us, one of those is actually the one that we're talking about here on severe weather side. Uh, so there is a likely uh, storm track that's gonna be at play here, but it really just depends on the gaps. All we need is just a few hours of a gap in between there and we can get some sun and we can enjoy the eclipse. So we're not quite to the forecast level yet. It's gonna take some time. All right, Aaron's yawning. Everyone say hi, Aaron. All right, uh, everyone's good. All right. Appreciate you guys. I'm going to stop rambling for today and uh, get ready for the midday show. If you guys like the new weather graphics as well, kind of cool stuff, right? Um, we'll have more on the setup for today's storms. Again, I would say the window of about 1 to 2 p.m. to about 5, maybe 6 p.m. That's a window to watch and see if that curl will help ignite some storms in southern Indiana and maybe northern Kentucky. We're watching it hour by hour. All right. I'll see you again, guys.